Our next speaker is Kerry Taylor. He'll be talking about investigation an investigation into owner motivation and attitude towards equine welfare during the community project and in future development. Thank you, Kerry. So hi everyone, I'm Kerry Taylor from Blue Cross and I'm the education manager there. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about owner motivations and I couldn't come and do a presentation without showing you some Blue Cross ponies. So here are Imperial, Ice Gem, Kit Kat, Galaxy, Lint and Freddo. So these all are between 6 and 12 months old. Now all removed and rescued and ended up in our care, malnourished, full of lice, really nervous to handle and I would say as you may agree these are some of the lucky ones. So with welfare charities currently reporting approximately three to three and a half thousand horses are either vulnerable or at risk within the equine welfare crisis, it's tough times for us. Charities are bursting at the seams. So how do we make this better? Educate. Everyone always says education's key. Well what we found as you can imagine is many of these owners are on the fringe of mainstream education. They don't relate to our websites, our literature, our leaflets. You know, so we need to come up with other ways. So charities are more and more looking at out, outreach work to engage owners in changing and improving horse welfare and really protecting our charitable resource. So Equine Link Days, which are managed and led through National Equine Welfare Council, are just one way of outreach work where we engage owners. So offering discounted passports and microchips and a, and a vet check, um, we are hoping to change our opinions. So when I was given a dissertation to write, I thought I would use this platform of outreach to really look into owner motivations. Um, my lecturer was like, are you sure? We've never done this before. Can I not steer you down the nutrition route? But no, I stood my ground and decided that I would try and engage some gypsies and travellers from the community in Hampshire. So how I was going to look into owner motivations was through a survey. So I designed a facilitated survey, which I was going to do on a link day, and then a month after, um, the same survey, really to understand owner opinions and motivations. I used the replica survey online to try and gather uh, a comparative data, so from welfare officers and a few other professionals. And then I ran a horse welfare assessment using animal observations only. So my sample population, um, unfortunately it was quite small due to a key member of the community um, going through a prosecution case at the time, which affected who came to the day. Um, but eight owners were surveyed during the link day and six owners completed the full survey. So the link day survey and the, the after survey to see if any behaviours had changed. As you can imagine, there was a, an increase in welfare officers taking part. So we had 60 welfare officers and then 19 horses were assessed to see the standard of welfare. Um, of the horses that attended the link day. So what did we hear from owners? Well, after chatting to owners, it became clear that they had a real understanding of the horse welfare crisis, of the massive amounts of horses that need our help. So five out of eight owners decided there were too many horses in the UK. And after chatting even further with the owners, they knew that actually, especially in their area, the airfields and the main place where they kept their horses was overpopulated. Okay, there were too many horses, the market has crashed, there's nothing they can do with them, they're worthless. However, this was not reflected in the number of horses that they owned. So uh, between, um, sorry, five owners had between 20 and 40 horses, and two of those owners actually couldn't tell me definitely how many horses they owned. Okay, and what we do know um, from the presentations we've seen in previous surveys is that increasing knowledge, increasing awareness, um, you know, having information does not always result in desirable practices. And this is something that we needed to look at. So when asking why do owners have horses, six owners had them because they've always had them. Now my sample population were from the travelling community and we know that it's a huge tradition for them to own horses. This is what they've always done, they're a real horseman. Okay, so the main reason was because they've always had them, why shouldn't they? That's what they've done. Doesn't matter if they don't have anywhere to keep them. So when looking at the comparative data, we noticed that welfare officers and owners aren't always in agreement, but this is okay. Okay, so actually, when we look at why people breed, owners say it's because that's what they've always done, whereas welfare officers would say it's through ignorance. The most ne negative impact on horses and their care was available land for the owners. So actually, um, four owners said that they had nowhere to keep them. Actually, no one would rent land to them. 
officers felt differently cost of keeping them. So what did my survey and my pilot study teach us? That we need more research. We can do it. This is a captive audience. We can work together and we can learn more about the motivations to really steer our education in the right way. We need to continue working together, so we're doing a great job. Use each other's experience, use our knowledge, and make sure that our outreach work is hitting the right areas that we need to. We need to stay open-minded, so be brave. Okay? We've, we, over the years, we have changed. We're looking at outreach, we're working with owners, we're understanding where they're coming from. So it's really important that we explore different avenues to ensure that we create the most suitable, um, sustainable behaviour change. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.